So I'm going to talk about culture. And culture is a very fluid thing. It's dynamic, and that's what makes it complex. It is influenced and shaped by everything around it. Look at me. I'm a product of everything around me. I'm a mixed heritage Pakistani who grew up speaking Urdu, and here I am on a stage in the Middle East giving a talk in English about the cultural significance of hand-drawn animation, which has its roots in the West. And when I was a child, I always admired the way people made animation. It's what inspired me to draw. And there is something incredibly beautiful about hand-drawn animation. It never looks obsolete. The beauty of the lines drawn and painted by the human hand cannot be replicated in the modern obsession with computer-generated detail. Animation may have its roots in the West, but it is a huge part of Japanese culture. Japan was influenced by the early works of Disney and adapted it to their own culture and made it their own. Now, who is to say animation is not rightfully theirs? It belongs to Japan just as much as it belongs to the West. And just like it belongs to Japanese culture, why can it not also belong to Pakistani culture? Let's try and shift our perception. I want to remind you that my country has no background in hand-drawn animation and has no hand-drawn animation industry. Not yet. We are trying to change that. I'm an artist and a composer, and I'm the founder of Mano, the first hand-drawn animation studio in my country. Thank you. In the start of the year, I put together a team of incredibly talented people from the UK, the US, Malaysia, and of course, Pakistan. Our Kickstarter raised $116,000, and we set out to make the country's first Urdu animated film. Thank you. I called it Shishagar, or The Glass Worker. The Glass Worker is a coming-of-age story about two children from separate walks of life set in the fictitious waterfront town. Vincent is an apprentice glass blower, learning from his father in their glass shop. And Elise is a prodigious violinist, striving to find her own unique voice on the instrument. The film will comment on the effects of war on children and follow both characters through their formative years as life gets more complicated and inhibits their friendship. I would love to show you footage from the animation now. Please keep in mind that the footage that you're about to see was made entirely by our small team at Mano, a group of people who live and breathe hand-drawn animation. I hope you will enjoy it just as much as we enjoyed making it. Can we dim the lights? Vincent. Vincent, मुझे माफ करना मुझे खत लिखते लिखते इतने दिन लग गए पापा की पोस्टिंग हमें हर थोड़े अरसे बाद अपना शहर छोड़ने पर मजबूर कर देती थी मेरा खत तुम्हें और ऑलिवर साहब को कब पहुँचता और अगर तुम्हारा जवाब आता तो क्या मैं उस शहर में होती भी या नहीं बस इसी ख्याल से मैं तुम्हें कभी लिख नहीं सकी
Thank you. Thank you so much. I want the film to focus on the more subtle moments in life, the beauty in the mundane and the tragedy in the beautiful. Now let's dive a little deeper into people being influenced by their surroundings. Take, for instance, my creative process behind the film. In the West, the concept art behind animation is an extremely collaborative process. You have a writer, a director, a storyboard artist, and a character designer working together to create the storyboards and scenes for the film. In the East, in places like Japan, it is much more personal. It is expected of the director to draw their own storyboards and really guide the rest of the team towards the completed film. Since we are such a small team at Mano Animation Studios, I had no choice but to take up this approach. Here are some of my storyboards for the film. Every detail and shot is planned out for the animation team to help bring to life. Even though no one will see my storyboards when they see the film, I still want to make them as beautiful as I can. I love this quote. For you to sleep well at night, the aesthetic, the quality has to be carried all the way through. I feel it is very important to encourage a healthy animation industry in the subcontinent and the Middle East. There is so much untapped potential to produce beautiful work. People constantly ask me about the film. They say, why are the characters not Pakistani? How can your characters speak Urdu if they are not Pakistani? Well, I grew up watching animated films made in Japan and America. I watched most of these Japanese films with English subtitles, and I never found it strange that characters living in imaginary European settings spoke in Japanese and behaved as though they were from Japan. Similarly, I never found it strange that Disney films set in China or the Middle East featured teenagers speaking with thick American accents and behaving like Western teens. It's all about perception. And this is why hand-drawn animation is so special. Not only is the craft incredibly intricate and beautiful, but because the medium allows us to reimagine the boundaries of the real world that we have set upon ourselves. It has the potential to create a more universal and inclusive experience. In a world as divided as it is now, we need that more than ever. Why Urdu? Most of the youth in my country prefer English and have little, little regard for the Urdu language. But that's because we haven't given them something that catches their attention, something that they can understand and be proud of in this day and age. No, nowadays, pretentious old artists still pine for dead Urdu poets, while most of the new artists in my country chase after approval from the West. I think we are all guilty of that to some degree. So, I want to reclaim my language, but on my own terms. I didn't want to set the film in Pakistan. That would have been too direct. I wanted to take an aesthetic and setting that animation audiences around the world are more familiar with and subtly inject it with Pakistani values, experiences, and themes. Because after all, the West so often takes characters from the East and westernizes them, I just thought it would be cool to take Western characters and make the landscape and living situation like my country and make the characters speak in Urdu. Urdu itself is a mishmash of different cultures. It's written in the Persian script with many borrowed words from Turkish, Arabic, and English. So why can't we do the same thing with animation? Why can we not take the beauty of Japanese and Western animation and make it our own? Through our Kickstarter funds, we can now make 15 minutes of our film, but the final goal is to make a 90-minute feature. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want children in Pakistan and the Middle East to grow up knowing that if they enjoy art and animation, that there is a place they can come and work where their skills will be utilized, appreciated, and their talent will be encouraged. 
I hope that with this unique collage of language and culture, people in Pakistan and around the world will have their eyes and ears opened, just as mine were opened as a child, to the riches of hand-drawn animation and its potential, along with the beauty of our language. Why should any of us be bound by the restrictions of an antiquated society? We can all choose our own path in reclaiming our culture. Thank you.